So now let's look at how we solve the whole Friedman equation. We've got the values right now, but how's it going to change as the universe gets it's younger or older? Well, we know what this is today. The crucial thing is going to be how the density changes. You know, we can, in principle, measure the density right now, but how is that density going to change as time goes forwards or backwards? That's going to be the one thing we need to know to solve this equation. Mm, okay. So let's see. So in principle, we sort of know what uh, d a dot over a is. That's the Hubble constant. Right. I helped measure that as part of my PhD thesis. So we know that. Um, and we sort of can measure to first order what the density is right now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, clearly we can figure out how the density is going to change over time, isn't it? It's pretty straightforward. Well, if we assume that there's only a finite amount of stuff per unit volume in the universe, the law of conservation of matter energy, then it is pretty straightforward. Now, there was, back in the early days of cosmology, a theory that in fact more matter was being created in the steady state universe. So that matter was being created out of the ether, sort of to speak. Yes. Um, <coughs> we talked about this in the first course, but uh, we're not going to consider it further here. Um, let's assume that matter is conserved. There's only a finite amount of it. So in that case, you've got a box of given size, and it's got a certain amount of stuff in it. Yep. And... Uh, the length of each side is going to be its L naught times A of T. Yep, so I've got a box, and then I let the universe get changed in size. So let's just say it gets a little bigger. Okay, so what's going to happen is, as the universe gets bigger, every length is going to get bigger. The width, the height, and the depth of the box is going to get bigger. So the volume is going to go up as proportional to A cubed. But the amount of stuff inside the book isn't going to change, because right. it's just assumed conservation of matter. So if we think of like an atom, if you think you've got 10 atoms in a box, they have a density or they have a mass, and then the box gets A cubed larger in volume, so the density is going to drop as A cubed, just like you've shown. There. Yeah, so this is pretty straightforward then. The density yep. just goes as 1 over A cubed. So no problem. Okay. problem solved. Game. Okay, good. We're done. Well, that's true if you've got matter whose rest mass dominates its motion. But we know mm. from Einstein mm. that if things are moving close to the speed of light, actually the bulk of their matter comes from their kinetic energy, their motion. So, for example, photons have no rest mass at all, but they still, have, they still weigh something That's because they're moving so fast. That's right. They do have an energy or yes. a mass equivalent, then, don't they? So for things that are going close to the speed of light or at the speed of light, like light, for example, things are a little bit more complicated than this. We know from quantum mechanics that the energy of a photon, and the same thing applies to anything close to the speed of light, yep. is going to be Planck's constant times its frequency. H nu. Yes. Or, if we like to work in wavelength, which I always find a little easier to think about, H, C over lambda, where I've replaced nu with C over lambda. For C light. is speed of light, and lambda yep. is just the wavelength. Okay, so in this case, as a photon or anything relativistic is going to be flying through space, yep. it's going to stretch. Space is going to expand. It's going to pull the front and the back further apart. The space between the front and the back, the A of T, the ds from over here, um, is going to get larger and larger. Its space oh. is expanding. So if, it gets if the wavelength gets longer, that means the energy is going to drop. Ooh, yes. That's interesting. So what's that do when we put everything in the box? Well, so now we've got a box full of, say, photons or yep. um, waves. As space gets bigger, sure, the box is going to get bigger. You've got the same number of photons in the box. Um, so the, d the energy density is going to get mass density is going to go one as a cubed. But in addition, each photon's lost energy. Right. And it's lost energy by how much the box is magnified. So you've got that volume of the box, a cubed. And then the length of the box, which... Well, the length of each photon yeah, being stretched. Which, length of the box, which stretches the photon, gives you an extra factor of A. So 1 over A to the fourth. And that takes me, then, the density of light, for example, and the density of atoms are changing at as a different rate over time. Now, you might think that this is violating some conservation of energy. Where's this energy going from the photons being stretched? We're going to, um, if you remember, when we derived the Friedman equation, we used energy conservation to derive it. Right. So the drop in energy and matter inside has gone into a potential energy of space. Right. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. This means that if, if we had matter and energy of the same density today, in the future, if space is expanding, the density of the radiation is going to get smaller compared to the density of the matter. Yep, okay. So in fact, today, we know that the, the density of mass and non-relativistic particles is actually considerably more than that of radiation. It's about 5,000 times more. But as you go further and further back in time, um, so A of t gets smaller, because we're in an expanding universe, um, because the radiation density is going as 1 over a to the fourth, whereas matter is only 1 over a cubed, 
sooner or later, radiation is going to dominate, isn't it? Yeah, so if you go back, and it's 5,000 to 1 right now, and since one's going down as a to the fourth, the other one is a cubed, you take the ratio, the ratio goes back as 1 over a, which means that when the universe was 5,000 times smaller than it is now, then matter and radiation were about the same, and before that time, radiation was the most important thing in the universe. Okay, so it's actually rather complic I mean, complicated to solve the equation for some complicated mix of radiation and matter, but in practice you can treat it as normally just one case or the other. So very early on, roughly before the first thousand years of the universe, radiation dominated, so you should use 1 over a to the fourth, whereas anything since the first thousand years, it's matter dominates, and so you can use 1 over a cubed. Yes, so unless something else is in the universe as we're going to talk about, because mm -hmm. we think the universe has got more than just radiation and normal matter in it, it turns out. So and we'll come back to that later. By and large, if we assume there was just radiation and matter, and we will ignore dark energy and other things like that for the moment, yep. then we've got now got all the ingredients we need to actually solve Friedman's equation.